Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you welcome to glory divine network tv with your host apostle ryan suknanan let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired oh, word of god yes, It is because of the mercy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not because I am better or I am holy, but because the Lord is merciful. Hallelujah. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. As I ask Sister Kayla to open in a word of prayer. Amen, church. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we welcome you into our presence today, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to be found in your house. Your word says that better is one day in your court than a thousand elsewhere. Father God, we give you preeminence in this meeting. Father God, we pray that everything that we do unto you will be a sweet-smelling aroma, Father God. That every ear be attentive, every heart be receptive, Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your living word that is alive. And we thank you that you never change, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the powerful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. David says, I was led when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our spiritual mom, Lady Nisia and Apostle Ryan, welcome to Glory Divine, a place we call home. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that we are here to connect with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I also want to extend a special welcome to our online viewers. Hallelujah. Enjoy yourself. We are in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Before we start, if I may ask, are there any visitors in our midst? Or anybody who is here for the first time in our place. Okay, praise the Lord. We all family. I believe we're gonna rejoice and we're gonna be glad in the Lord. Amen. I'm gonna hand over to Brother Dion. Amen. 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 Come on, just let's rejoice in the presence of the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, just let's praise him.
here to glorify the name of Jesus. Are we in agreement tonight, church? Hallelujah. I want to see by a show of hands who came here with a mission. Who came here with an assignment? Hallelujah. You didn't come here for nothing. Hallelujah. Can somebody say, Jesus, I need you. Say, Jesus, I praise you. Hallelujah. Now clap your hands for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord.
is good. Jesus. And all the time, we're going to give a love offering. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, Each of you should give what you have. You have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. We're going to give from our hearts. Not because we are forced to give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And to our online viewers, if you want to plant a seat into, into the ministry or you want to sow a seat into our, our man of God, Apostle Ryan, the bank details are on the screen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask Elder Dave to pray for the offering. Father, we thank you, Father God, for your word. Remind us, oh, Father God, that when we give a God, you have blessed us. Bless us, press down, shake and shake and running over. I pray as we obey your word and as we sow into your kingdom, we know, God, that we are obeying your word and that it will reap results, oh God. So we thank you for what you're about to do. And I pray that this money will be used for the extension of your kingdom. Amen and amen. Amen. As we sing a song, you can come forward and give your seat. And remember, we must keep the social distance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, you leave me out. Oh, God, you leave me out. 
the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands as we continue to worship the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. He's God Almighty. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's the first. He's the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God created us to worship Him. God created us to lift Him up. Hallelujah. So we're going to lift the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Glorify the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him and let's give Him glory. Hallelujah. There's no one else like our Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise in the house of God. We adore you this evening. We lift up your name, O oh God. We crown you King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the soon coming King, the Lily of the Valley, the bright morning star, the fairest of 10,000, the Alpha and the Omega, all the Rose of Sharon, Lord, you are our deliverer. You are, O oh God, the Lord of the breakthrough. You're the God of new season. You're a God of more than enough. You're a God that brought down the walls of Jericho. You're a God that departed the Red Sea. You're a God that departed the River Jordan. You're a God that raised up Jairus' daughter. You are a God that called forth Lazarus from the dead. You are a God that healed Naaman of his leprosy. Hallelujah. You are a God that favored Joseph to become the vice president of Egypt. Hallelujah. You are a God that met Paul on the road to Damascus and you changed his life, oh God. You're the same God that is present here tonight to touch lives, to change lives, to answer prayers, to restore our hearts and soul this evening, oh God. Those that are watching online, you are going into their homes right now, oh God. You are touching and refreshing and reviving everybody that is listening to you tonight, O oh God. 
we thank you for your blood because your blood has never lost its power thank you for the cleansing power of your blood just one drop will wash away every sins of God and Lord we thank you for tonight we thank you for your presence we thank you for your glory we thank you for angels in this place we thank you for healing we thank you for answered prayer we thank you for breakthrough we thank you for deliverance we thank you for favor we thank you for what you are about to do oh god lord we thank you for your word that will speak to us tonight oh god your life transforming word we commit every person into your hands oh god I commit myself as I deliver your message, O oh God. Anoint me because your word is already anointed. I pray every ear to be attentive, every heart to be receptive tonight, O oh God. No wandering minds because your word is truth and your word sets free, O oh God. We thank you for tonight, O oh God, that we come to your altar. We come to receive, O oh God, from your altar tonight, O oh God. Hebrews 13, 8, you said you never change. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, O oh God. You said cast your cares upon us because you care it for us, O oh God. You said, is there anything difficult for you? Lord, we thank you because you said that you are our shield. You are our fortress. You are our deliverer. You are our present help in times of trouble, O oh God. We can come to you with our burdens and heart and pain we know that you are a father that loves us oh God and you will not turn us away oh God we are oh God so precious in your eyes every one of us oh God has needs this evening oh God those that are watching online they have needs oh God you are oh God that meets our needs you said no good thing shall be withheld from us oh God and we thank you that when we seek your face all these things shall be added oh God and we look upon to you the author and the finisher of our faith tonight oh God we thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you preeminence tonight to have your own way in our lives. We leave everything at the altar, oh God. We leave our burdens, we leave our problems, we leave our weakness. We leave, oh God, our shortcomings, we leave our need, we leave everything at your altar tonight. Lord Jesus, wash us with your blood. Touch us with your hand, O oh God. Restore us tonight and answer our prayers. Let us go out healed and restored tonight. Let us go out delivered, O oh God, tonight. Uh, let us go out receiving our breakthrough tonight, O oh God. Let us go out with our burdens, uh, Lord, shouldered upon your shoulder. Let us go out tonight with answered prayers, O oh God, with jobs and businesses, O oh God, and promotions and increase. Let us go out, O oh God, tonight by receiving our miracle. You have never changed, God. You have never changed. And as I commit your children, O oh God, speak to them. Instruct them. Speak to them, guide them, teach them. Lord, bring them back to your fold. And let your word become alive as a minister, O oh God. Minister through me. Apply your blood upon everybody. Even those that are watching online. Apply your blood in their homes. Let your presence and your joy flood those homes. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Amen. Let's give the praise and worship. Powerful praise. Powerful worship. Let's give the leadership. Give yourself a hand. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Church, I want to get into the word of God quickly. Hallelujah. I'm not going to keep you too long. Amen. And I want to quickly speak on a subject a Jesus encounter. Hallelujah. A Jesus encounter. Ask your neighbor, have you ever had a Jesus encounter? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to the word of God. John chapter 1. 
John chapter 5, verse 1 to 10, the New King James Version. I'm not going to be preaching too much on this text. I have preached before, hallelujah, and we can go on and go on. But there's a couple of things that I want to speak tonight. John chapter 1, verse 1, John chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five portions. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. And I believe the pool is stirred here tonight. Hallelujah. The presence and the glory of God is here. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been there in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Verse 7 says, the sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Listen to me. This paralyzed man, he says, while I am coming, he was paralyzed, but he could move. You get, do you get the story here? He said, while I am coming, he was paralyzed, but he could move. Hallelujah. But he was not ready. Hallelujah. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. A Jesus encounter. Getting on into this text, hallelujah, we see in the text that Jesus is visiting Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know that Jesus is visiting here. Because the Bible says where two or three are gathered, he's there in the mighty name. And top of that, his spirit is living inside of you. At this time, as this text is written, many people visited Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Some visited for the Jewish feast. There were a lot of Jewish feasts at this time. Some were tourists that were visiting. But Jesus came on a mission. And Jesus is always on a mission. Hallelujah. Wherever Jesus is, there must be healing. Wherever Jesus is, there must be restoration. Wherever Jesus is, there must be miracles. Hallelujah. It's not that the time of miracles is over. I mean, we, we have miracles every week. We have testimonies every week. Jesus is still the supernatural God and he's still the miracle God. When you have a Jesus encounter, something must happen. Hallelujah. There must be a divine intervention, a divine interaction, and a divine, hallelujah, interception in your problem in the mighty name of Jesus. So Jesus was on a mission to serve somebody. Hallelujah. Because Jesus will not walk without a heart of serving in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus came to serve humanity. He died for you and I so that we, and I, so we can have victory today from every situation that we are facing. So everybody was coming to Jerusalem in their own mission. But Jesus came with a mission with a heart to serve to be of help to somebody, to lend a healing hand to somebody. Hallelujah. And I believe tonight Jesus is in our presence and waiting for somebody who can show faith. Hallelujah. Somebody who can exercise faith and somebody who can have a desire to say, I want to be made whole. I want a touch of the miracle. I want a supernatural encounter. And Jesus will serve you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So he was ready to go anywhere to minister, hallelujah, to people's need. And uh, yeah, at this time, hallelujah, he went to Bethesda, amen. So he knew that somebody needed his healing hand. 
When he went there, it's not that he didn't know this man was there for 38 years. Though Jesus, hallelujah, gave up his divinity to walk as humanity, but his connection with God was so, so strong that Jesus walked in discernment from day one. Hallelujah. He knew everything because he was walking in revelation and discernment. You and I can walk in the same revelation and same discernment if our prayer life is right. Hallelujah. If our connection with God is right, if our stand with God is right, you and I can walk in revelation because the Holy Spirit will show you all things and will teach you all things. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth in the mighty name of Jesus. So Jesus knew that this man needed his help. So he left every other place of Jerusalem and he went to Bethesda, hallelujah, where this man was paralyzed for 38 years at the mercy of people. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. So there were many people in Bethesda who must have wanted divine healing. But Jesus found it fit to go to this man that was in this situation, hallelujah, for 38 years. Amen. Are you believing God for a divine encounter in your life? Are you believing God for divine interception? That you have been praying so long, that you have been in a condition so long, that tonight in divine connection, you can receive your divine miracle and you can go out healed, hallelujah. With God, there's always a, a moment of divine encounter. It can happen anytime. Hallelujah. Your faith can be. So the deaf, the crippled, the blind, many others with various diseases were there, all at the pool of Bethesda. But today, Jesus, hallelujah, amen, decided to focus, to zoom in, and to concentrate on one man. Hallelujah. Will you say to Jesus, I want to be that one man tonight? Hallelujah. Will you say to Jesus, Lord Jesus, tonight is my night. Tonight is my miracle night. Tonight is my miracle interception. I'm not going out of divine connection the way I came. I want to be divinely connected. Amen. Your faith shall make you whole. Amen. A Jesus encounter. Hallelujah. They believe that any time the people that were there, that the water can be stared, hallelujah. And the first person to dive into the water, hallelujah, will be healed. So Jesus went to this place and met someone who was sick for 38 years, hallelujah. He asked him a question, do you want to be made well? Hallelujah. And the person answered, no one is there to help me. Hallelujah. So you can see his focus was wrong. His focus was wrong. Hallelujah. You can ask people to support you, but don't get dependent on people. That's a very powerful statement that I'm making, even to those that are online. You can ask people to support you. It's not wrong. But never get dependent on the arms of flesh. Always be dependent on your source, who is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's your way maker. He's your miracle worker. Hallelujah. He can change your situation because he's the source of life. He's the source of creation and he's the source of your prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. So he definitely wished to be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. But he was depending on the mercy of people. And he said, Jesus himself, do you want to be made well? But now he had such a victim mentality and so much of people let him down. The first thing, he spoke from pain. He spoke from rejection. He spoke from abandonment, hallelujah. And he's telling Jesus, there's no one there to help me. But the Bible clearly says, before he could move, others went in. Why didn't he move beforehand? Why didn't he, why wasn't he prepared and waiting at the pool? So when the water splashed, he just dives in because he had mobility. He was, he was paralyzed, but he had mobility. Am I talking? Because this is a resemblance of the church. Hallelujah. The pool of Bethesda is a resemblance of the church. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
20 people sitting, hallelujah, in this row, hallelujah. From the 22 of them, or five of them next year, we'll have their own car, we'll have their own house, we'll have their own business, we'll have a promotion, hallelujah. But then the rest, hallelujah, is still waiting for a man. He's still waiting and dependent for a man. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, man is not uh, your source. The Bible says the arms of flesh will fail you, but Jesus shall not fail you. Hallelujah. Glory. Can, can we shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus? Let your trust uh, be on the arms of flesh, uh, on the arms of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the world, everything is changing. But God remains the same. Why am I telling you this? Hallelujah. Because it is the same Jesus. At that time, Jesus was walking in his humanity. He was trusting on the Holy Spirit. Amen. To enable him to, to perform miracle. But today, Jesus is now walking in his divinity. He took on his godly form. Hallelujah. Amen. And he is right here in this much of us, hallelujah, and he has not changed. He's still asking you right now, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get rid of that habit? Do you want to get the stumbling block that is stumbling you every time in your life, away from your life, hallelujah? Do you want me to help you, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus? The same question Jesus is asking you tonight. Amen. So lift up your hand and say, Lord, I want an encounter tonight. I want an encounter tonight. I'm not going to blame my past anymore. When you're asking me right now, do you want to be made whole? I'm not going to ask or go into my past. My father let me down. My mother let me down. That brother abused me. Hallelujah. Or that person divorced me. Or that person abandoned me. Nix. I, I don't want to hear of that. Jesus don't want to hear of that. He just wants to know, are you prepared to give up your past and walk in your purpose and destiny? So if you're that person, hallelujah, lift up your hands uh, and Jesus is watching you. So Jesus is the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. Hebrews 13, 8, the Bible says, uh, the Amplified uh, Classic Edition, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, I just want to establish this statement with about four scriptures. He has never changed. He's the same Jesus that walked at the pool of Bethesda and made this paralytic to take his bed after 38 years and walk. He's the same God that can open doors. He's the same God that can restore your marriage. He's the same God that can heal your sickness and disease. He's the same God that can set your son of drugs. Hallelujah. And your daughter of drugs. He's the same, same God that can restore your family. He has never changed in the mighty name of Jesus. So Hebrews 13, 8, the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever for all ages. He has never changed. Malachi 3, 6, AMPC. For I am the Lord, I do not change. That is why you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Hallelujah. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19, New International Version. God is not human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Hallelujah. One more scripture, Isaiah 40 verse 8. I just want to justify the statement that I made that God never changes. Isaiah 40 verse 8, New King James Version. The grass, grass withers. The flower fades, but the word of, the, of God stands forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the pool of Bethesda church is a symbol of the church. It's a symbol of the church. Who is the church? You and I. Hallelujah. This building here is not the church. This is a gathering house, gathering place. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the church that comes into this building. In the mighty name of Jesus. And this is a resemblance of the church. That in the church. We got paralyzed people. The Bible says at the pool of Bethesda. They were paralytics. They were lame. They were crippled. Hallelujah. They were blind. So in the church. Sometimes we are paralyzed people. Hallelujah. 
the word of god can be preached the miracles are happening but you are too slow so slow so slow to move and get your miracle when the miracle is happening you staying at home hallelujah when the miracles are happening and the and the month of october which was the conclusion month but you are buying groceries outside and you're not coming to church you paralyzed hallelujah you so slow or oh, you lame or oh, you lame and you lame and you walk by the time the the water is already gone not stead or oh, you blind you can't see through the eyes of god what god is doing in this season hallelujah and god is talking to you tonight and saying this pool of bethesda hallelujah represents the church in the mighty name of jesus the church that jesus said i died for i set you free i broke the bondage of everything that held you captive hallelujah you might not be perfect but i am perfect you might not be righteous but i am righteous you might not be holy but i am holy and my holiness is upon you my righteousness is upon you hallelujah walk in your position and authority in the mighty name of jesus go and pass you overtake and recover what belongs to you and this paralytic man was always paralyzed and the pool is there and the water he can see is stead and by the time he tries to move 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 someone else jumps in and that is how we are missing our miracle in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah we are waiting there are so much of men that don't attend church hallelujah they're waiting for the wives to pray for them Hallelujah. Amen. When God is saying you got to move, you got to get out of your paralytic situation. You got to be where the water is dead. Hallelujah to receive your miracle. A Jesus encounter. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we break Bethesda up. Hallelujah. Beth 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 means the house. Bethesda means mercy. it means the house of mercy hallelujah the church is the house of mercy this is where you come and receive from the hand of god this is where you come hallelujah and the presence and the glory of god is here this is where bondages are broken this is where the hold and the stronghold of the enemy is broken because of the glory and the presence of god the more you come into the presence of god the more hallelujah you take the glory and the anointing and the bible says that anointing destroys yokes and the devil cannot put a chain back on you I'm not saying that you won't make a mistake I'm not saying in your life that you will always but I'm saying if the anointing and the glory is over you you will fall you'll get up same time the lord will raise you up hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus so people went to the pool of Bethesda to receive healing to receive deliverance Hallelujah to receive physical restoration and same how the church is when you come into the church of God it is important we must have fellowship in the presence of God you cannot stay at home and say no no i can stay at home and praise God God is the one that instituted the government the fivefold ministry the office of pastors apostles uh, teachers evangelists in the church to equip the saints to equip the body to build the body up to encourage the body so you are the body of Christ that you can be strong hallelujah when the opposition come you will resist and you will stand it is important to be in the house of god hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus those that were paralyzed those that were crippled those were that hallelujah they could have went and sat down somewhere else but why did they sit at the pool at the house of mercy which represents the church hallelujah they could have sat at home in the backyard and thought that god will heal them but they went to the pool because they were waiting for something to stay when two or three get into the house of god when there is powerful praise and worship the glory of god comes the atmosphere is dead and that is where you receive your deliverance very important to be in the house of god you know i got saved about 30 years ago and from 30 years to now 
The only time maybe I missed a service in a church is when I was traveling out of South Africa. I've never missed a service because I know how important it is to be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Never allow another appointment to take the appointment of God in your life. A Jesus encounter, hallelujah. So you might be going through trials, you might be going through tribulation, you might be going through difficulty, hallelujah. Amen, but you got to know one Jesus encounter can set you free. Why is it so important to be in the house of God? Psalms 84 verse 1 and 2. New King James version, Psalms 84 verse 1 and 2. Why is it so important to be in the house of God, the house of mercy? The Bible says how lovely is your tabernacle. O oh Lord host my soul longs yes even faints for the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God Psalms 84 verse 10 and 12 New King James version Psalms 84 verse 10 and 12 for a day in your courts is better than a thousand I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good things will be withheld from those who walk uprightly. O oh Lord host, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Psalms 100 verse 1 to 5. Why is it important to be in the house of God? Psalms 100 verse 1 to 5, New King James Version. Make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for generations. Hallelujah. A Jesus encounter. A Jesus encounter. Why is it a must as a close for every Christian to attend church? Listen to me. You cannot stop going to church because somebody offended you. You cannot go stop going to church because you felt that the service was dead because you are the church bringing the church into the building remember if you felt somebody dead then you are dead inside because you are the church you should be alive and the glory of god inside of you must so electrify the presence of god that even those that are dead will get on fire You got to understand that you are the church. If you are condemning the church, criticizing the church, judging the church, you are judging yourself because you are the body of Christ. You got to understand that the church will always be constantly attacked by the enemy. The church is for imperfect people which includes you and you are imperfect. You got to understand that church is a family that God wants you to become part of. You can never isolate from the church. gathering and become an island very important to belong to a family of god which is the church gathering the ecclesia getting together under a roof very very important important reasons we attend church i'm going to be quick important reason we attend church to hear the preaching of the word Hebrews 4:12 the preaching of the word is quick it's powerful it's sharper than any two edged sword right now the preaching of the word is encouraging you the preaching of the word is disciplining you the preaching of the word is convicting you the preaching of the word is directing you hallelujah today church is becoming a place of entertainment and the enemy is dancing with the congregation hallelujah we got to understand god never commanded us to entertain hallelujah Amen. But he he commanded us to preach the truth. When we preach the truth, hallelujah, it penetrates the hearts and transforms 
the minds of people. When we preach the word of God, hallelujah, it calls sinners to repentance. When we preach the word of God, it encourages the downtrodden, burdened, hallelujah, and the forsaken to know that there is help, there is hope in the mighty name of Jesus. When we preach the word of God, it inspires the Lord's service and people become witnesses of Christ. When we preach the word of God, it guides us into the path of life. The word of God, which is truth, and it sets your heart free. Secondly, we come to church because we participate in corporate worship. Where two or three are gathered in the midst, God is there. Matthew 18, 20. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Hallelujah. Corporate worship is powerful. It's good to worship at home as an individual for self-edification. But when we come together, hallelujah, there's such power. Such power. Hallelujah. Thirdly, we come to church because iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 27 verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And what I'm doing here, hallelujah, I'm sharpening you. You are sharpening your brother. The worship team has been sharpening you. The stewards and ushers has been sharpening you. You come into a family, hallelujah. When you go down, somebody can pick you up. Iron sharpens iron, hallelujah. Amen. So we've got to understand the enemy got you right where you are when you get offended and you want to leave the church because his mission is to divide and conquer. His mission is to divide and conquer and isolate so he can go for the kill. Once offense come to you, hallelujah, the enemy is working and he's got you right where you want. Hallelujah, right where he wants you. Fourthly, to encourage your pastor. You attend church to encourage your pastor. This is something new for you. If you were not here, who I should be preaching to? <laughs> I should be looking at myself there on that big screen there and preaching to me. Like for six months, I looked at myself online. Hallelujah. Yes, for six months, I still preached. Amen. Nothing stops me. But to, the Bible says in Philippians 1, verse 3 to 7, Philippians 1, 3 to 7, listen to me carefully. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. In every prayer of mine, I always make my entreaty and petition for you all with joy. And I'm almost conclusive, almost concluding. I thank my God for your fellowship. Paul is talking here. He says, I thank my God for your fellowship. Now listen to this. Hallelujah. Amen. Your sympathetic con- cooperation and contribution. Some of you don't like that. I thank my God for your fellowship. I thank my God for your contribution. Hallelujah. And I thank my God for your partnership. Paul is saying he was a pastor of the church. And that is what I'm saying to you right now. I thank my God for your fellowship, you coming here. I thank my God for your contribution. And I thank my God for your partnership, hallelujah. In the ministry, because the church of God can move on. You know the song, the church of God is moving on. It cannot move on without you. You are the body of Christ. You are the embodiment of Christ. You are the ambassadors of Christ. You are the hands and legs of Christ. You are the instruments of Christ. And God chose you, hallelujah, to represent him on earth. And I am convinced, verse 6 says, and sure of the very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Who is he talking to He's talking to people that are fellowshippers that come to church, that broke bread every Acts 2 verse 32, that broke bread always. He's talking to contributors and he's talking to partners. And he says that I know my God will supply your needs. I know my God in time will satisfy every desires of your heart. Because you are partnering, you are contributing, and you are fellowshipping in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. A Jesus encounter. So the pastor's heart of Apostle Paul comes through when he says hallelujah and he talks these things. And to round up, 
Number five, you come to church to be mentored. Number six, you come to church because your kids are taught the word of God. And they grow up in the ways of God. Proverbs Proverbs 22 verse 6. Number seven, you come to church because your family is knitted, knitted together. For me and my house shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I was a very strong man. Amen. When it comes to my family. My children were small babies and made them be in the church. Whether they were one year old or two year old, I made sure they were in the church. If I'm in the church, they were in the church. Whether they sleep, whether they what, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And now my son is like 27, 28. My son, I don't want, my daughter, I don't want to say her age. Hallelujah. All serving the Lord. And now even my, my granddaughter is serving the Lord. Even my son-in-law is serving the Lord. For me in my house, me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Why? Because we were in the house of God. It is so important when your children are doing drugs, when your children are running with guns, when your children are running with knives and pangas and drugs, and then you're going to say it's a friend. No, it's your responsibility to have them in the house of God so that they can have a Jesus encounter. Hallelujah. Number eight. Your life is transformed and you belong to a larger family. Number nine, you become an instrument to bless others and bear each other's burden. Number 10, lastly, you attend church because God says to Hebrews 10 verse 25. Hebrews 10, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as it is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. So, church, two words, as a close, two words are used in the Bible to describe the church. Koinonia in Greek and diakonia in Greek. Koinonia means fellowship. Church is a family that get together and fellowship. That's koinonia. And diakonia means to minister. So when we fellowship, we minister. I am a minister. The worship team is a minister. The music band is a minister. The person who stand and shake your hand is a minister. Some way or the other, they are ministering to you either in worship or in service or whatever. They are ministering to each other. And let me tell you, you are very important in the house of God. Because you are carrying the presence of God. You are the church coming into the building of God. The anointed one is living inside of you. So when you come here, two or three gather together, the present, it is you together gathering in corporate brings down the glory of God. You are part of the body and very intricate in the operation of the supernatural. Let's stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So don't think that you are just coming to be blessed. You are coming to bless others also because you carry God inside of you. Church, Bethesda, House of Mercy. Tonight, will you close your eyes and lift up your hands? Will you say to the Lord, Lord, I need an encounter. I need an encounter tonight. I need your presence. Lord, as you zoomed and focused on this man that was crippled for 38 years, will you zoom on in me, O oh God? You know I cry in the night. You know my battles are fight. You know the pain and the trials and the tribulation and the heartaches, the issues, the burdens I go through. 
you know my sickness you know the desires of my heart of god i might not be physically crippled but emotionally i am crippled because of the hurt and pain inside of me lord i'm not even happy with myself because i try to be happy and i'm only happy for one month then i go back to that person that i don't like to be because of i feel within myself that i'm a victim of situation lord jesus will you zoom on me tonight i want to go out healed i want to go out restored those that are at home watching right now this applies to you right now wherever you are will you lift up your hands right now in the mighty name of jesus jesus has done it he's doing it and he will do it again you want a financial breakthrough you want a financial breakthrough the widow was about to die she became a oil distributor and became a powerful businessman just when the prof- prophet released a blessing the process of multiplication originates from god the little fish the little bread fed over 12000 people and baskets were left over shows the surplus the multiplicity of god the increase of god the overflow of god i pray that over your life tonight because of the favor of god your business must prosper your house must prosper your life must prosper your career must prosper your health must prosper it is the will of god for your life it is not something that you have to beg god no you don't have to beg god it's yours it is already completed at the cross as a gift given unto you you got to receive it tonight in the mighty name of jesus the blood paid it all the blood paid it all in jesus name you don't have to fear anymore you don't have to have loneliness anymore you don't have to suffer rejection anymore jesus will make you whole jesus walked at the well and the samaritan woman was there and jesus asked her to give him water and then jesus spoke the word of revelation and says go call your husband and he foretold everything hallelujah and said that you have six men in your life but you're still not satisfied there's no peace in you until jesus gave her living water she accepted jesus christ and jesus became the seventh man in her life seven is a number of wholeness seven is a number of completion then she received true peace true peace can be given by jesus hallelujah then god can complete your loneliness and divine satisfaction tonight and to those that i'm speaking to online your search ends tonight let the peace of god that passes all human understanding guard your heart and mind tonight in the mighty name of jesus lift up your hands as i pray for you heavenly father i come to you in jesus name lord i pray for all father everybody that is here father in the name of jesus i pray your god your peace that passes all human understanding be released jehovah shalom the god of peace jehovah jireh the god that Lord provides Jehovah Rafika the God that heals Jehovah Shama the God that will always be there Jehovah Gamola the God that fights the battle of your children Jehovah Elohim the God that creates I pray Father right now touch your children set them free O oh God I pray for your anointing O oh God and your glory to be upon them right now upon everybody that is online also I pray and release uh, Lord right now O oh God your word that will touch them their presence will go and saturate their homes in the mighty name of jesus they shall be delivered from everything of god that is hindering them in the mighty name of jesus i apply your precious blood on everybody in jesus name amen and amen let's give the lord a hand hallelujah glory to god amen clap like you are free glory
Let's shout, let's shout, let's shout in the presence of God. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Amen. It's good to see so many of you on a Tuesday here. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure you are back on Tuesday again. Don't uh, start staying at home. That is why I touched on why it is important to be in the house of God on Sunday. Make sure if you register for 8 o'clock, be on 8 o'clock and be on 10 o'clock service. Hallelujah. Amen. 10 o'clock service, invite somebody. Amen. Invite your friend. Invite even an unbeliever. God loves everybody in the mighty name of Jesus. Church, just one announcement. Uh, anybody that wants to baby dedicate, it will be done on the 15th of November in our 10 o'clock service. We invite you to become a partner in our global ministry which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world. When you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection PIN. Because when you sow in good soil, Indirectly, your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.